Sari Alander, our first presenter, is working as Agile Lead in Visma Solution Finland. Her role is to help organizations to transform and modernize the ways of working towards future-proof modern R&D company. She's also an ambassador in DESA, DevOps and Agile Skills Association in Nordics, and in which role she influences and actively contributes to the development of high-performance teams through DevOps and Agile initiatives. And can you imagine? Her passion is no smaller than to help the world with this ongoing change. But let it be reminded that there is no single approach or solution to solve challenges in different organizations. So we are so happy to hear what Sari has to tell us. Warmly welcome. The stage is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I'm so delighted to hear and share my ideas and, and experience on, on transformation. The basic reason why I'm here is that there's a lots of different kind of researches from past few years that most transformations actually fails. So, and failing means that they don't achieve their goals, what has put them in the beginning. And I thought that I might have something to say which helps the future, future organization, future teams who are planning to do the transformations that I would be able to a little part help them to find the ways to actually succeed. So I hope that you find those hints here. Um, I have two parts in my presentation. I will go very briefly in the beginning, this kind of theory uh, behind the transformation, I would say. So what could be useful for you to use your transformation? And then I go through the latest transformation I have been participating in Visma Solution R&D. So giving a little bit theory and then the real practice. So let's start with the, with the really the theory part. I have selected first uh, McKinsey's um, take on Agile uh, in, I think, research and also kind of a model um, and the idea there is, is really that when you start do the transformation, you, you touch every face of, face of the organization. And I think that's something you have to acknowledge when you start to do the transformation. Uh, so uh, also you have to acknowledge that you can't do everything at the same time, but you have to understand that you will be touching everything. So if you think that something old could stay, that's like first uh, illusion you, you have to uh, put down because you have to touch everything. So it's it starts from the strategy, then you have people, processes, technology and structure. And you can do the splitting differently, but you need to think about all of these areas. Then I have selected a uh, Jonathan Smart idea of better value, sooner, safer, happier. And there, I think uh, the most important thing is that when you start to do this transformation in your case, um, you have to understand why you do that. What are the reasons, really the why um, in your case? And my experience is that the why is always different. You can't copy, copy it from anywhere else. Uh, you really have to think about it in, in your case. And very bad why is actually if you're stating that, okay, you have to be agile organization or you have to be a DevOps organization, because that's not the real why. It's it's just going with the flow and not understanding why in your organization need to do the changes. Well, then I have selected another model, um, leading the change. This comes from John Cotters. And I like 
his idea of the big opportunity. So you have really, you have the big opportunity every time when you start a transformation or, or change. And Koda has put it in very nice format, I, I think actually. Uh, there's like eight, eight things you have to take care of. So I think that if you keep this in mind, when you are planning your transformation, uh, you actually could get quite far by making sure that you actually don't make these eight errors. So make sure that you have a great enough sense of urgency. Um, make sure that you have a powerful enough guiding coalition. Um, Ensure that your strategic vision and your why is, is really there all the time. And make sure that you are communicating and having the volunteer army so that people really buy in the ideas in, in what you are doing in the transformation. And then you have to recognize the obstacles and remove them, remove the barriers, what is actually making change not possible. Um, make sure that you understand long term, but you need to understand the short term, even uh, greater sense, I would send, say, say, because if you can't show that you are doing something in the short term, it's very hard to get the long term mission visible. Then the first victories come, hopefully, always. Um, but usually there's like next ones to do as well. And it's very easy to fall back the old habits. So how to actually institute, how to make sure that you are anchoring the changes in the organization and the culture. So making sure that these eight elements are actually happening helps a lot uh, going forward to do the successful transformation. Then Ron Myers mind a cap. Uh, one more model I have found extremely useful um, is to understand that, okay, when you are moving from the current state, the future state, um, you need to make sure that you have three things about change in place. You have willingness, you have ability, and you have clarity. So again, three things to take care. Uh, but if you just remember, and the mind the gap model gives you even more tools uh, how to handle this, but uh, understanding that you can't just say, say that, okay, change, but you have to understand how to do the, do the change. Um, then couple from, from the DASA, because I'm the ambassador, couple of kind of free hints. Uh, there is uh, offered uh, this kind of competence quick cans for DevOps skills, so personal, you can actually go and check that, okay, do I have needed knowledge and skills in place personally that, okay, I'm ready for, for the transformation. And there will be available in April also the DASA Digital Readiness Assessment, which is actually validating the organizational status uh, for digital transformation. So it's giving you hints and ideas that, okay, what areas I should be focusing on in my organization. And then from the theory point of view, I'm a big fan of reading books. So I just wanted to share my, my hints. If you would like to start a book club in your organization, for example, this is good collection to start with. All right, Sit go then going really about the real case. So this is my solution R&D. And I'm just going through the steps, what we did in, in this my solution so far, and what steps we did and 
where we were successful and also I'm going to share a little bit where we have been struggling. A uh, little bit information about the Visma solution and the R&D there. Um, Visma solution has about 320 people, 80 of them in this R&D where we have started the transformation. We are a very successful company and in financial terms and market leader as well in our our financial and payroll platforms uh, solution. And we are part of the Visma uh, uh, corporation, but uh, this is very loose in that sense that Visma Solution is quite independent company uh, itself. And the system how we are built is that R&Ds are very independent as well. So one product has their own R&D, own help desk and customer service, own sales and marketing and own products and markets and research and development departments as well. So what we did about a year and a half ago when I was hired in, in the company, um, I was hired to refine the agile transformation in, in R&D, starting in R&D actually. Uh, now we are already expanding. But a uh, big picture of transformation uh, looked like this a little bit. So the history was that the transformation was actually tried already a couple of years back. And people felt that that was like very unsuccessful. Um, there were so many things what didn't actually went well, that there was a wall of resistance in the organization. The idea of transformation and agile way of working was not very popular. And there was serious concerns, uh, okay, what to do next? And that was the situation I, I was hired uh, to work with the organization. And what we did, we actually had this kind of idea that, okay, there would be a phase zero where we actually find out, okay, what is the situation now? What is the real, real situation? We need to understand what is really the status of the organization. And then we plan that the transformation would be actually taking 18 months six months phases one two and three and then after that it would be actually ideal that the continuous modernization will be in place so transformations shouldn't take like ages there should be a like start and end and then there should be the idea of that, okay, this is like normal, this is like continuous way of doing things. So that's what first, first when you plan the transformation, you should be planning some kind of a, a start and end. Okay, so what the phase zero looked like. Uh, but before we went there, I, I already mentioned in the theory side that the vision is extremely important. So you need to find out that, okay, why we are transforming and modernization, do, why are we doing this? And in Visma and in NetVisor R&D, that was the, our vision in there. I'm not going to go there and do detailed things because it's not important for you because this is like, NetVisor's vision, you have to find your own vision, but it's important that you find it and you understand it the commonly in the organization. Then about the phase zero, we used a Simon Sinek, Golden Circle, why, how and what. And for the phase one, we had this idea that, okay, we need to understand place where, where we are and we gather the information and we form 
uh, transformation team and start to collecting the supporting army for the for the uh, transformation. So we're going to have a commitment to transformation and the changes, at least part of the organization. So we have to start from somewhere. And how we did it? We did it the way that we ask anyone in the organization who, who want to participate to finding out where we are now and where we want to go. And out of 80 people, we had about 35, 40 people. So very, very good number of people participating and helping us to understand the history, um, understanding the people and organization, understanding the business, understanding the technology side of the organization and understanding the agile maturity of the organization. And those people also help us to actually formulate what are the what is the order where we need to concentrate on. So which order we should be actually starting and doing this uh, transformation. So phase one was coming really from, from those workshops. We need to start transforming and we listen to people. And after that, we decided that, okay, we need to focus first in organization. So kind of the structure, we need to get the structure which is actually supporting not hindering the changes. Um, we need to change the leadership way and we need to grow and kind of give a basic understanding what is the agile way of working. So these were the things we focused in the phase one. So we started to pushing for the changes. And also in the phase one, we understood that there was no R&D strategy actually in place. So there was no strategy and vision for the R&D. And we recognized that, okay, we want to have this kind of guiding for the whole organization and it is really important. So we ended up a little bit different uh, set up things than the McKinsey, but very close. And again, I can't highlight enough that please, you need to pick up the areas which are like saying something to your organization, not something what others have found out. So please pick the areas which are really meaningful for you. But the good kind of a, a point is that keep them like not too many. Five is like my maximum. Three would be nice, but we ended up with the five. So we had the customer, we had the team, we had the people, process and technology. And each of the areas, we actually made the more detailed uh, this kind of actions, what we are actually doing, each of these strategic areas. Hi, we are Ethicode and we organize the DevOps conference. Regardless of where you are on your DevOps transformation journey, we would love to have a chat with you and help with your next steps. We have seen many examples of what successful DevOps transformations look like. You can find us at ethico.com. The links are in the description. And have a great time with the DevOps conference talks. But all phases, we had these actually three levels of doing things. We had the vision so this is the vision this is the very high level that okay this is what we do in the phase two then we had the strategic uh, teams and under them there was like high level ideas that okay these are the activities we want to do and then we have kind of a backlogs in the teams in the different uh, special areas which were, could be very, very detailed. But it is important to understand that there's a different levels uh, and you need the different levels. So just having a very high 
level vision is not enough, but you really make, have to make it practical, practical and, and really something which is uh, tangible for, for the people. And phase four, which we are now. So now we are in the phase where we are institutionalizing the modernization. So actually um, making sure that people are really uh, having this feeling that, okay, this is like continuous way of working, uh, making sure that everybody has a clear understanding what we are doing. And we will continue with the R&D strategy teams, but we are not going to talk about the transformation anymore, but the continuous modernization. And the work uh, continues really, and we need to start continue pushing. And it might actually turn out, I don't know yet, we still have about four months left uh, from this phase three. We might actually find out in the May, June time that maybe it's more beneficial for the organization actually say that, okay, we still continue the transformation, but we hope that we don't have to. So how we have done then the measuring, because that's courting, you have to measure, are you moving? Are you getting what you, you need? So we have very general information here. We decided that we have to go for team level and then we need to go for general. And we understand that we have not ideal situation to actually collect this information. We have to do the manual work and we have to kind of accept that in the beginning. We are now working on getting it more automatic and more reliable in that sense, but you have to start from somewhere. <coughs> so first what we have kind of a, for the whole transformation is that every six months we actually ask from the organization, so everybody in the organization, what, you, what they think about the changes what has taken in place in past six months. And there is three options. They can answer that they like the change, they don't know about the change, or they don't like change. And of course, the like one is the green one, they don't know about is the amber one, and they don't like the change is the red one. And like you see, this is like the result of the first phase it has been quite successful, the lots of lots of green. So people like mostly the changes. And I think this is very simple, very easy, and very effective way of actually getting information. Are we moving? Are we doing right things? And also giving the hints where you have to focus on next. Then we have an employee engagement survey every month, which we are following very, very closely. And um, uh, all the blue ones are from transformation time. So we also recognize that every time when we do the changes, which are not necessarily very nice ones or easy to adapt, the employee engagement survey shows that uh, happiness goes down. And you shouldn't be too afraid of this because that's how it is. It should not be easy all the time. It should, be, should not be happy all the time. But actually, which is very important for us and what we are also following is that number of promoters is actually growing all the time. Even when the happiness goes down, we're still have a number of promoters steady growing. And then we have measurements for, for really the tech part, understanding do we proceed in there. And then we have these different measurements selected for the sales, meaning development teams. And thank you. Any questions? I hope I didn't take too much of my time oh you didn't sorry <laughs> we have a uh, still time for questions and there was one 
Yes, there has been at least one question about whether we could get some more insights about the DASA ass assessments. Well, from me, of course, <laughs> you can contact me straight. And of course, from DASA as well. So any, any direction goes. Okay. And then there was another, another question about how you would communicate upcoming changes in a company. Very good question. Um, that is actually one of the areas what we have found extremely difficult. And we have tried many ways. Um, we have uh, actually, we have decided that we need the several communication channels. So our organization is organized the way that we have a uh, development teams. And, and then each of the teams has uh, uh, kind of certain roles. So we try to make sure that these different roles communicate a part of transformation and change in, in the development teams. And then we have a communication for whole teams. And then we have a communication for whole organization. And, and then we have also tried in different um, scaling uh, activities so that we actually in, uh, encourage teams to communicate more to each other. So uh, that's also the area you actually have to work on your organization and find a way which works in your organization. And we are still struggling. We, we recognize that um, all of the changes, what, what is taking place, as you could see the, the amber part in, in, the, in the first questionnaire, in some areas, it was quite big. Even half of the people actually said that, okay, they have not, no idea what this is about. So clearly we are not succeeding all the time, but we are learning and we are improving all the time so there is no silver bullet in in that area i actually had this kind of um how do i say it? like like eye opening with the uh, ari tikka i i discussed with uh, or listened uh, his ideas in in few weeks back and he reminded reminded me that before uh, the communication um you actually have to collaborate so you have to somehow get the feeling that we are here together. And I recognize that we are, we are not taking that account enough. So that would be my hint in, in here. So figure out how you actually build the bridge before you actually do the communication so that you can be sure that when you are doing the communication, people are they are listening and they are willing to hear what you say in, in that sense. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, we just got one more question in. Maria, if you think we have time to fit another in. Excellent. I very much like this question. Um, how do you handle the loudest detractors? Like, do you let them, or do you try to win over them by focusing on them? or let the time pass and hopefully the growing majority will handle it or some other approach? How do you quiet those voices? Well, we haven't actually. We, we at, at the moment, we have had a tactic that we are really listening everybody and, and trying to understand what are the reasons behind the detractors. And, uh, um, that's how we have actually, I think we had had some successes uh, in that sense. But now after a year and almost half, um, we still have a few. And it might actually mean that we need to take some stronger um, discussions because that that is really good question in that sense that detractors can be really taking down others with them and and it's it's really really important to understand them and discuss and try to find the reasons because it's always possibility that there is really really good 
uh, ideas, something what has not been other part of the organization understood or, or taking account. So again, no one approach, but you really have to feel what is the status in the organization. Do we have any other questions? We still have some five minutes time before proceeding. There is still one that's received a couple of <laughs> votes. If project managers are always looking at resourcing and people's time, and they're likely not to want a transformation because it takes away that time from the development teams, how would you address that? Okay. That's really, really good question, because that was one thing what we have to really think about in the transformation. And in this case, uh, we actually ended up in uh, the solution that we were implementing the portfolio management for the whole organization. And the transformation tasks are part of the portfolio. And there is like, then, then we have this kind of a scaling, uh, common planning, and it is actually stating that, okay, these common activities around the transformation, they have to go to Teams backlog. So it's not voluntary in, in that sense, but it's right like organization, prioritization of the work. Okay. And Maria, if we have one time for one more quite quick question, we have one more that's been asked. What do you think? Yeah, I'm such a sweet person that I'm, I, I love questions. So, of course. Okay, there's one last question. Is there any software tool to help manage the whole process of transformation? No. <laughs> Simple answer. That's, I like it. That's my, because it's not about the tool. It's, it's, it's about the people. And if you actually hoping for, for the, this kind of easy solution, <laughs> Uh, you could be a millionaire, actually, if you come up with the tool. <laughs> I, I this is your chance, people. Did you hear what Sari said? <laughs> if you want to become a millionaire, get that transformation tool software going. Yeah, even if it's not working, but you are good at marketing because people would love that. Oh, I just implement that tool and then my transformation will succeed. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, sorry. That's that's how I think. Yeah. <clears throat> well, good. Sorry. Thank you so much for your presentation. Even though in such a short time, so much good stuff that we, I think we still have to sort of uh, let it melt down in our minds to be able to capture it all. You're getting a lot of claps here in our chat. That's uh, I I agree to that. Um, Thank you very much.